Hi, I'm Patricia Baird Clark, and I'd like to welcome you to the sixth segment in my series on the tabernacle and its furnishings. This is on the candlestick, and we will see that the candlestick represents our spiritual mind. Everything we study about the tabernacle has to do with something within us, and there are many secrets for the end times revealed in the tabernacle and its furnishings. And we will see some exciting things in the candlestick as we learn more about our spiritual mind and what God is going to be doing with our spiritual mind in these end times. First verse regarding the candlestick is Exodus 25:31, And thou shalt make a candlestick of pure gold. Of beaten work shall the candlestick be made. His shaft and his branches, his bowls, his knops, and his flowers shall be of the same. So as we look at this, we will see that everything mentioned here in this verse has a counterpart in our spiritual mind. I came to the conclusion that the candlestick represents the, special, the spiritual mind because of Proverbs 20:27 20, that the Lord brought to my mind. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. The Hebrew word used for spirit here is neshama, and it means intellect and mind. It's not the usual word for spirit used in the Old Testament. The most common word for spirit is ruach. But neshama means intellect and mind, among other things. But with all the meanings of ruach, none of them are intellect or mind. So that is very uh, important here for our type of the candlestick as being the spiritual mind. The spirit of the man the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. A uh, candle is the light that we get from the Lord, divine illumination, divine inspiration. Uh, and it's the Lord who knows us in the very inward parts of our being. The inward parts of the belly, uh, just uh, the deepest parts of ourself that we don't really know or understand. We don't understand our own heart, and it takes the spirit of the Lord to reveal to us. So it's like the Lord searches the inward parts and he then illuminates us about what is inside. He illuminates our mind. Then we know how to pray, how to repent, and how to work with the Lord as he conforms us into his image. Now that I've explained that for this interpretation the candlestick is the spiritual mind, we can go on now and begin to unpack this verse. And thou shalt make a candlestick of pure gold. Uh, pure gold represents the pure divine nature of Jesus. So the interpretation here for part A is, And you shall make your spiritual mind to be pure and divine in nature like Jesus. And part B, Of beaten work shall the candlestick be made. In the natural, when they made the candlestick, they had a piece of gold and they would beat on it with mallets and beat on it and beat on it and beat on it till they got it in the shape that God wanted it to be in. Well, for us, we do spiritual work and we get beaten up by difficulties in life. But it's as we meet the difficulties in life that our spiritual mind is developed. Uh, the scripture tells us in Acts 14.22 that it is through much tribulation that we enter the kingdom of God. And so the difficulties that come at us in life are opportunities for us to uh, pray and seek God and make decisions according to his will and his written word to be obedient to the Lord even when it's very difficult to do so. And in this way, our spiritual mind is developed. And going on with this verse, we're going to learn more about our spiritual mind. Part C, his shaft and his branches, his bowls, his knops, and his flowers shall be of the same. So these are all different qualities that we are to have in our spiritual mind. Shaft in the Hebrew means soft. And Webster defines soft as being the absence of anything harsh or rough, not rigid and inflexible. And so our spiritual mind is 
to be like that. We're not to have harshness or roughness in our mind. We're, we're to treat other people with kindness, with gentleness, and we're not to be rigid and inflexible in that uh, we would be stiff-necked. We need to be pliable in the hands of the Lord, that he can mold us and shape us and bend us uh, into whatever it is he wants us to be. So my written interpretation here is, you are to make your spiritual mind without harshness, roughness, or rigidity. Going on with his branches. In Hebrew, the word for branches is kaneh, and it means a reed or a rod for measuring. And in our previous studies on the furnishings in the tabernacle, the cubit was the unit of measure. And it was always uh, measuring up to the standard of Jesus. Well, here, our unit of measure is branches. And once again, uh, our standard of measure is Jesus. So we want our spiritual mind to measure up to the spiritual mind of Jesus. So our interpretation is, you are to measure your spiritual mind to be pure and divine in nature. And his bowls, bowls or cups, cups are containers. And spiritually, I see this as containers that we're to have a capacity to hold the Holy Spirit. We don't just automatically have a large capacity to hold a lot of the Holy Spirit. But God has to spiritually stretch us and prepare us to receive more and more of the Holy Spirit. And he does this as we cooperate with him. So my interpretation for his bowls is you are to make your spiritual mind to have the capacity to hold the Holy Spirit as Jesus did. His knops. Knops in the Hebrew means crowns or chaplets. I'm taking my interpretation for crowns from the New Testament. There were five crowns listed there that were for believers. Uh, the crown of incorruption, of rejoicing, righteousness, life, and glory. These are qualities to be in your spiritual mind as in Jesus' mind. Uh, a spiritual mind that is like Jesus cannot be corrupted. A spiritual mind that is like Jesus rejoices. Uh, we are to rejoice in all things because we know that God is in control and he's on the throne and all things work together to accomplish his purpose. And we uh, have the righteousness of Christ we have his life within us, we have eternal life, and we have the life of Christ that we can actually live out of now. And glory, God is going to share his glory with the great church of the end times. There are going to be some wonderful, exciting things going on, a great ministry going forth from those that are conformed to his image in the end times as Christ, the bridegroom, bridegroom comes to join with his bride. And finally, flowers. Flowers are lovely and fragrant. Our spiritual mind should be lovely before the Lord, a sweet-smelling fragrance unto God. And so my interpretation for this is your spiritual mind is to be a sweet-smelling savor unto God, even as Jesus was and is. And the last phrase shall be of the same. All these qualities of your spiritual mind are to be like Jesus. They were all made of pure gold. And so all of these things are to be like Jesus' pure divine nature. Now let's look again at this verse and I will give the entire interpretation. Verse 31 states, And thou shalt make a candlestick of pure gold, of beaten work shall the candlestick be made. His shaft and his branches, his bowls, his knops, and his flowers shall be of the same. And my interpretation in its entirety is, and you shall make your spiritual mind to be pure and divine in nature like Jesus. 
you are to respond to the difficulties in your life in such a way that you build your spiritual mind to be like Jesus. You are to make your spiritual mind to be without harshness, roughness, or rigidity. You are to measure your spiritual mind to make sure it is pure and divine in nature. You are to make your spiritual mind to have the capacity to hold the Holy Spirit as Jesus did. Your spiritual mind should have the following qualities, incorruptibility, rejoicing, life, righteousness, and glory. Your spiritual mind is to be a sweet-smelling savor unto God, even as Jesus was. The previous verse establishes that the candlestick represents our spiritual mind. And now we're going to go on and we're going to learn some more things about the spiritual mind and how God is preparing it for these end times. So going on with verse 32, And six branches shall come out of the sides of it, three branches of the candlestick out of one side, and three branches of the candlestick out of the other side. So here we introduce a new number into the tabernacle series, the number six. We've already seen that number four is the number of man in relationship to the earth as created. Six is the number of man in his imperfection. Seven is the number of divine perfection, and so six falls one short of that and is a type of imperfection. Branches as previously seen represents a measurement according to the standard of Jesus and sides is plural uh, there is more than one side in fact we'll see there are two sides to our spiritual mind and so looking at part a and six branches shall come out of the sides of it six being man in imperfection as measured according to the standard of Jesus which is branches and knowing that there are two sides, we can say here regarding part A, part A, all that pertains to man's imperfection shall come out of both sides of your spiritual mind. In part A, we saw that imperfection is coming out of the candlestick. And continuing on with part B, three branches of the candlestick out of the one side. Three, we've learned, is a number of divine a perfection and completion but divine completion and perfection is not coming out of one side because the words out of are not in the Hebrew at all it should read three branches of the candlestick one side and so this is saying then that divine completion and perfection as measured by the standard of Jesus that's three branches is in one side of the candlestick not coming out of it and uh, so here we see one side of the candlestick let's go on to part C and look at the other side of the candlestick and part C and three branches of the candlestick out of the other side once again out of is not in the Hebrew so the actual verse should read, and three branches of the candlestick other side. And again, three divinely perfect and complete branches measured according to the standard of Jesus, and the other side. So we've learned already in the tabernacle series that when we have two of something, uh, two can be divided. It's a symbol of uh, difference with one being higher and the other lower. So we have here one side and other side. One side would be the highest because one is the number of unity. It's the number of the Godhead. Here, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one Lord. And uh, so one is the highest here and other is lower. So we can interpret here then part C and divinely perfect and complete as measured by the standard of Jesus shall your spiritual mind be on the other side which is lower and now to complete my interpretation of Exodus 2532 
and six branches shall come out of the sides of it, three branches of the candlestick out of the one side, and three branches of the candlestick out of the other side. And my spiritual interpretation reads, All that pertains to man's imperfection shall come out of both sides of your spiritual mind. Divinely perfect and complete, as measured by the standard of Jesus, shall your spiritual mind be on the one side which is higher, and divinely perfect and complete, as measured by the standard, standard of Jesus, shall your spiritual mind be on the other side which is lower. And now to review what we've been learning about the spiritual mind as represented in the candlestick that there are two sides to our spiritual mind with one higher and the other lower and imperfection has come out of both sides of the spiritual mind and now each side is uh, perfect and complete and now we'll see what is going to happen next three bowls made like unto almonds with a knob and a flower in one branch and three bowls made like almonds in the other branch with a knop and a flower so in the six branches that come out of the candlestick we're going to see here there's a new awakening of the spiritual mind coming the key word for unlocking this verse is almonds in the Hebrew it is shakad and it must bear some resemblance to another word that has to do with awakening because Jesenius lexicon uh, defines it this way so called because of all the trees it is the first to arouse and awake from the sleep of winter so almonds has to do with awakening from the sleep of winter and I see this as meaning that we are awakening from the winter that came upon all of mankind at the fall way back in the Garden of Eden and there are parts of our being that are spiritual in nature that went to sleep at that time and have been so ever since original sin came into humankind and now in these end times as God is removing the sin nature from us we saw that in the six branches coming out of the candlestick uh, imperfection coming out of the spiritual mind and now God is going to awaken spiritual parts of us that were uh, went to sleep at the time of the fall and the first thing he's awakening as we will see here in the candlestick is uh, our spiritual mind there is a part of our spiritual mind that is the higher part that has not been available to us at all during the whole the, all the ages past since the fall and that's a part of our spiritual mind that can comprehend uh, heaven and we were not allowed to see into heaven or to see the Lord face to face because of all the sin in us but now that God is removing imperfection and uh, sin nature from us then we're going to be able to enter into these things and that's the side of our spiritual mind that we have never been aware of that has not been used until this time it is spiritual in nature the other side of our spiritual mind is the part of our our being that is developed we become a Christian and our spiritual mind becomes um, awake unto the Lord and it is developed as we interact with life and we make decisions based on the Word of God and gradually that spiritual mind is developed and so these are the two sides of our spiritual mind and we're going to see that they're going to be awakened now let's look at each segment of this verse part a three bowls made like unto almonds three once again is divine completeness and perfection bowls is a word we looked at in our study of the table of showbread it's a uh, a bowl as hollowed out and my interpretation for that is our capacity to contain the Holy Spirit a bowl contains something this is spiritual 
and uh, what we want to contain is the Holy Spirit. Made like unto is not in the Hebrew, and almonds is the awakening of the spiritual mind. So we put these together, the interpretation for part A, three bowls made like unto almonds, is a perfect and complete capacity to contain the Holy Spirit will be awakened in your spiritual mind. And continuing on with part B, with a knop and a flower in one branch. A knop is defined by strongs as crowns. I've talked about crowns in the arc segment and in the segment on the table of showbread. And I took the meaning of crowns from the New Testament where there are mentioned five crowns of incorruption, rejoicing, righteousness, life, and glory. Flowers are beautiful and they're fragrant. And so, uh, of course, the most beautiful fragrant thing there is in all the universe is Jesus. So my definition of flowers is the beauty and fragrance of Christ. And one branch, one was the highest side, and branch means as measured by the standard of Jesus. So my interpretation for part B with a knop and a flower in one branch is with incorruption, rejoicing, righteousness, life, glory, and the beauty and fragrance of, fragrance of Christ on the side of your spiritual mind that was reserved for the end times. And putting together parts A and B, three bowls made like unto almonds with a knop and a flower in one branch. My interpretation is a perfect and complete capacity to contain the Holy Spirit will be awakened in your spiritual mind with incorruption, rejoicing, righteousness, life, glory, and the fragrance of Christ on the side of your spiritual mind that is higher and was reserved for the end times. And going on to parts C and D, I've combined here, and three bowls made like almonds in the other branch with a knop and a flower. Other branch is the lower side of the spiritual mind as measured by the standard of Jesus. So my interpretation for and three bowls made like almonds in the other branch with the knob and the flower is a perfect and complete capacity to contain the Holy Spirit will be awakened in your spiritual mind with incorruption, rejoicing, righteousness, life, glory, and the fragrance of Christ on the lower side of your spiritual mind. And now part E, the final uh, phrase in this verse, so in the six branches that come out of the candlestick. So in, in the Hebrew, can also be translated as, and we know that six is imperfection, branches, as measured by the standard of Jesus, and that this has come out of the spiritual mind. And so God is able to awaken us spiritually on both sides of the spiritual mind because he has taken out that sin nature and all the imperfections that we have as a result of the fall. So the interpretation for so in the six branches that come out of the candlestick is as that which has been measured and found imperfect has come out of the spiritual mind. And here is my complete interpretation for verse 33 of Exodus 25, which reads, Three bowls made like unto almonds, with a knop and a flower in one branch, and three bowls made like almonds in the other branch, with a knop and a flower, so in the six branches that come out of the candlestick. And my interpretation is, a perfect and complete capacity to contain the Holy Spirit will be awakened in your spiritual mind with incorruption, rejoicing, righteousness, life, glory, and the fragrance of Christ on the side of your spiritual mind that is higher and was reserved for the end times. A perfect and complete capacity to contain the Holy Spirit will be awakened in your spiritual mind with incorruption, rejoicing, righteousness, life, glory, and the fragrance of Christ on the lower side of your spiritual mind, as that which has been measured and found imperfect has come out of the spiritual mind. So my summary here for this verse is that we have learned that there are two sides to our spiritual mind, 
both sides have a greater capacity for the Holy Spirit as the imperfections have been removed from our spiritual mind. We have just seen that imperfections have come out of both sides of the spiritual mind and that we have a greater capacity to contain the Holy Spirit. And this verse 34 is going to show us now what we're going to be doing when this happens. And in the candlestick shall be four bowls made like unto almonds with their knops and their flowers. So we have a new number in the tabernacle series. It's the number four. Four is the number of man in relation to the world. How we relate to things of the world, the creatures of the world, the people of the world. Everything that has to do with the world. Bowls, again, is capacity. And so this is about our capacity to relate to the things of the world. And almonds, as we've learned, means newly awakened. So my interpretation for this first part of verse 34 is, And in the spiritual mind shall be a capacity to relate to the world in a new way. And finishing up this verse with incorruption, rejoicing, righteousness, life, glory, and the fragrance of Christ. Now this is the perfect ministry that will flow out of those who have been perfected in the end times. It will be Christ ministering out of them through their perfect spiritual mind that contains the Holy Spirit. We're going to minister even as Jesus did when he raised the dead and he healed the sick and he performed many miracles. Uh, the Lord says in John 14:12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. So here we can see how this is possible. It's not we ourselves doing the great works, but it is the Lord Jesus uh, who has come to dwell in us in much greater measure as we have uh, been perfected that is going to be doing the ministry and so we are going to be uh, going out in the earth we're going to be ministering to the needs of people I believe there's going to be starvation and we're going to be able to multiply the food even as Jesus did uh, people are going to be sick and we're going to be uh, healing the people and we're going to be doing whatever needs to be done, but it will be Jesus doing the work through us. And because we have been perfected in that the sin has gone out of us, we will not be corrupted through this ministry. We will not be prideful about the ministry or trying to find identity through it or trying to determine which one of us is the greatest. Are we not going to go off and do our own thing? We're going to do only that which the Lord tells us to do. This is going to be the perfect end time ministry going forth out of those who have come into perfection in these end times. And now to finish up with verse 34, which reads, And in the candlestick shall be four bowls made like unto almonds with their knops and their flowers. And here's my interpretation for that verse. And in the spiritual mind shall be a capacity to relate to the world in a new way with incorruption, rejoicing, righteousness, life, glory, and the fragrance of Christ. In the previous verse, I talked about the great ministry that's going to go forth in the end times through those who have been willing to die to everything, that Jesus can do his work through them. It's going to be an astounding ministry, very supernatural, very powerful. And if we were doing this in ourselves, we could get very prideful over this ministry. But this verse assures us that that will not be the case because God is going to work humility into our lives. Let's look at verse 35. And there shall be a knop under two branches of the same, and a knop under two branches of the same, and a knop under two branches of the same, according to the six branches that proceed out of the candlestick. The knop 
is the same as it has been before. It's the crowns, the crowns being incorruption, rejoicing, righteousness, life, and glory. Under means below, the bottom, and uh, this in type is humility. Two speaks of the sides of the spiritual mind, with one being higher and the other lower. And branches means as measured by the standard of Jesus. The phrase, a knop under two branches of the same, is written three times in this verse. I believe the Holy Spirit put it three times for emphasis. There cannot be a strong enough emphasis on humility. I believe this is a subject that is rarely preached and taught in the church today, but it's incredibly important because that, the very nature of Jesus was one of humility. And if we're going to have the mind of Christ, if we're going to be like him, we also must be humble. And this is incredibly difficult because everything around us mitigates against that. Of the same is not in the Hebrew. And so the interpretation I have for a knop under two branches of the same is, and there shall be incorruption, rejoicing, righteousness, life, and glory with humility in both sides of your spiritual mind, according to the standard of Jesus. The last phrase of this verse says, according to the six branches that proceed out of the candlestick. Six is the number of man in his imperfection, and branches is as measured by the standard of Jesus. And so we have here in this uh, phrase, According to the six branches that proceed out of the candlestick, my interpretation is as imperfection as measured by the standard of Jesus leaves the spiritual mind. So the only way we're going to have humility is as perf imperfection, which is determined by the standard of Jesus, leaves the spiritual mind. I'm going to read verse 35 again and give the interpretation in its entirety. And there shall be a knop under two branches of the same, and a knop under two branches of the same, and a knop under two branches of the same, according to the six branches that proceed out of the candlestick. And my interpretation is, and there shall be incorruption, rejoicing, righteousness, life, and glory with humility in both sides of your spiritual mind which would be repeated then two more times. According to the standard of Jesus, as imperfection as measured by the standard of Jesus leaves the spiritual mind. We are able to see the humility of our Lord Jesus all throughout Scripture, but one particular passage comes to mind as emphasizing this in Philippians 2, 5 through 8. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross." So there's such an emphasis in that passage on the Lord's humility. Even though he was God, he did not try to demand his rights as God. And he made himself to be of no reputation. He was just like any other man to most of the people. Uh, they accused him of all kinds of things that were not true. And yet, he did not defend himself. He made himself to be a servant. I think of him girding himself and washing the feet of the disciples. Uh, such humility in that action. And for God himself to limit himself by coming to earth as a helpless baby and living in a body that has weaknesses, that needs sleep, and that can suffer death. and uh, It's just so amazing that God would do this for us and to be obedient unto the point of death. So these are characteristics of the spiritual mind that was in Jesus that is to be in us. 
And we can only be humble if we have the mind of Christ because none of this is natural to our nature. Only God can be this way and he will do it in us if we are willing to allow him to do so. And going on now with verse 36, Their knops and their branches shall be of the same. All it shall be one beaten work of pure gold. Shall be of the same is not in the Hebrew. And knops and branches are as, as they have been consistently throughout this portion of scripture. Um, one is the number of unity. Beaten work is the suffering through difficulties that we endure in order to be conformed to the image of the Lord. Pure gold is that holy nature of Christ. Here's that verse again with its interpretation. Their knops and their branches shall be of the same. All it shall be one beaten work of pure gold. And my interpretation is the incorruption, rejoicing, righteousness, life, and glory as measured by the standard of Jesus shall be because of our unity with Christ having resulted from our responses to suffering that caused the holiness and divine nature of Christ to be in all. It would be good if we could view all the difficulties to come that come at us in life as being from the hand of God for our own good. And if we resist and complain and try to get out of it, then God will just have to bring another trial our way until we finally learn that it is in these things that God is working his divine nature into our life. When we truly love the Lord, nothing can come into our life but what God permits. And he permits these things that we can learn. And it's for our own good. And I'll admit, I don't like the difficulties any more than anybody else does. But I have learned over the years to respond to them by asking three questions. Where is God? What is he saying? And how am I responding? And I ask those questions. As I ask those questions, the Holy Spirit reveals to me what God wants to work into my life and how I am to respond. And sometimes it's very difficult for me to respond in the way I know I should. And sometimes I have to go through repeated difficulties before I finally get it and I've really allowed the Lord to change me. This is not easy. And it's so important that we know this because there's a lot of teaching in the church today that people can regard as meaning, well, God's going to do what he's going to do and I'm just going to go to church and, and be good and do what I think a good Christian should do and it's all going to work out. But God has things for us to do, and he is wanting to do a work in our lives. And it does require us to give up what we want in order to choose the will of God and be as Christ when he said, Not my will, but thy will be done. And that's how we can be conformed to his image. In the previous verse, I talked about our unity with the Lord. And in this verse, we'll see something that comes out of this unity. Verse 37 reads, And thou shalt make the seven lamps thereof, and they shall light the lamps thereof, that they may give light over against it. And looking now at the first clause, And thou shalt make the seven lamps thereof. My definition of lamps comes out of Psalm 119, verse 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, and a light unto my path. So the lamp here is revelation of the word of God. And this is a perfect and complete revelation because seven means perfection and completion. And so out of the unity that we saw in the previous verse is going to come perfection and completion of the revelation of the word. And it says, thou shalt make. This is something we prepare it doesn't just land on us out of nowhere. We go to the Word of God. We study the Word of God. And we make time for the Word of God. And as we do so, God then opens our eyes to the Word and He gives us revelation. And He doesn't give revelation uh, of a deep nature to anybody who just goes to the Word casually 
or they're just kind of curious about something. But for those who come into this unity, who are willing to take on the humility of the mind in Christ and to die to self and become all they can be in Christ, these are the ones that God is going to give revelation to in his word. So my interpretation for this clause, and thou shalt make the seven lamps thereof, is in the previous verse we saw our unity in Christ. In this verse we see perfection and completion in our revelation of the word that comes from that union. union. And the next clause says, and they shall light the lamps thereof. Light in the Hebrew is Allah. It means to ascend, arise, or carry up. So as we go to the Word and God gives us revelation, the Word ascends up, it lights up, and the revelation of the Word will rise up to a high level. And then the next clause, that they may give light over against it. The word light here is a different Hebrew word. This word is or, and it means illumination. Over against it is all that opposes it. And so we see that the revelation of God that uh, rises up in those who are ministering, as they minister it out, it will give illumination to those that are hearing the word that's going to expose all that is in contradiction to it in them. The preaching of the word is going to bring great conviction on people. Uh, as the word is preached and the Holy Spirit is uh, at work, this is going to be a living word. It's not going to be just the mechanics of delivering the word. The word is going to go forth with the power of the Holy Spirit and it's going to convict people's hearts. And people are going to see within themselves things there that are in opposition to the word of God that they never really recognized as being opposed to the word of God. And so the, the light and the level of the word that's going to go forth uh, in ministry from those who come into this union with Christ is going to help the body of Christ rise up and come into perfection as it exposes the sin in them and they're able to repent of that and uh, be delivered. And now I will bring this interpretation together for verse 37. And thou shalt make the seven lamps thereof and they shall light the lamps thereof that they may give light over against it. In the previous verse, we saw our unity with Christ. In this verse, we see perfection and completion in our revelation of the word. Our revelation of the word will rise up to a high level that will give illumination to expose all that is in contradiction to it. This verse shows us what the Holy Spirit is going to be doing as the word is preached. Verse 38 and the tongs thereof and the snuff dishes thereof shall be of pure gold. So in the natural, when the priests were ministering in the holy place, they had to maintain the wicks on the candlestick because as the wicks burned, the part that had been expended needed to be removed. And they had these tongs, which are like tweezers, where they pinched off the part of the wick that had burned and they placed it in a snuff dish and eventually that snuff dish would be taken out somewhere and the old wicks were discarded. But of course these are spiritual tweezers and uh, so I'm going to look to Isaiah 6.6 6 to help us understand what the tweezers were uh, for us spiritually. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth, and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. So, as the ministry of the word is preached, from those who have the mind of Christ, who have become one with Christ, the Holy Spirit is going to convict people's hearts of sin and he's going to pluck that sin right out of them. So my uh, spiritual interpretation for verse 38 and the tongs thereof and the stuff dishes thereof shall be of pure gold. My spiritual interpretation is in the previous verse the word spoken exposed sin. 
This verse shows the sin being plucked out and discarded. This will be by the working of the Holy Spirit as the word is preached. And continuing on with verse 39, Of a talent of pure gold shall he make it, with all these vessels. I see this as saying that the entire ministry will be of God. The word preached will be of the Lord, because it's coming forth from those who have completely died to self, have the mind of Christ, and so it is the Holy Spirit preaching through them. And the Holy Spirit is doing the work in people's hearts as they speak forth the word. And in this verse, a talent is a coin that contained a certain amount of weight or value. So we're just talking here about a certain amount of gold, a certain measure of gold. And so it's going to be exactly what is needed for the purpose. My interpretation here is the ministry will be the exact amount of word needed for the specific purpose of God. All will be God's doing from the mind of Christ. So everything here is pure gold. Everything is uh, the holy divine nature of Jesus doing all of the ministry. It's going to be a very powerful ministry, a cleansing ministry, a ministry that is preparing the bride for the coming of the bridegroom. Bridegroom is he is coming for a church without spot or wrinkle. And we've been trying to be without spot or wrinkle for centuries. And no one has ever come to that place yet. But in these end times, the uh, those who are conformed to the image of Christ, who are going to be ministering, will have been brought into this place in the Lord of sinless perfection. And they will then minister to the church and bring others up to the place of sinless perfection. And eventually the world is going to see that the church is real, that the uh, this is something to be reckoned with. There's not going to be any question about what religion is the true religion because Christianity is going to far surpass anything the devil could do with his false religions. And Christ is going to be all in all. He's going to be exalted and lifted up. And multitudes are going to come to the Lord. And the church is going to be purified. And God is going to be glorified in the midst of all this. And now we come to the final verse uh, in the segment on the candlestick. Verse 40, which reads, And look that thou make them after their pattern, which was showed thee in the mount. Mountains are places, uh, high places spiritually. Very important things happened on mountaintops. Uh, of course, here Moses received uh, the instructions on Mount Sinai. But uh, in the New Testament, we have the Mount of Transfiguration, where Christ was transfigured before some of his disciples. We have the Sermon on the Mount, and uh, the Lord died on a mountain. Uh, Calvary, Golgotha, was known to be on a hill. And uh, so a mount would be a high place spiritually. I see this as meaning in all that we do to develop our spiritual mind. We are to look to Jesus for our pattern. That's where it says, and look that thou make them after their pattern. And we do this as we look to the scriptures for our example of his life, death, and resurrection. So we are to continually be in the word of God, learning all we can learn about Jesus, and committing as much as we can to memory and then applying it to our lives so that we too can be like him. So this is only going to happen as we look to the pattern, as we look to Jesus and make sure that we follow his example in all things, even to the point of Calvary, of laying down our very life, that Christ can be all in all in us.